All right, I've been struggling here for a minute. Got that cable out. My pull string came undone. All right, just another progress update. Working on painting. I've got this whole thing primed. I might leave the inside of the trailer just primer. Since there's an actual coat of red paint underneath that, I'm not too worried about it. I'm kind of getting tired of painting. But uh, got this. I was not so zealous as to take the fenders off. I'll get that underneath there at some point. But kind of see I'm making progress on this bad boy. I still need to address that. I'll have that done today. For the most part though, these panels are getting close. This back panel, I think, is most complete. So I'm going to get those front panels painted one more time, paint the top covers, and then do that top cover. And so far I bought everybody out of this blue paint. I'm just waiting on them to restock it. So that's kind of a pain in the butt, but whatever. So that's part of the reason I'm not painting the inside of the trailer blue is I just getting the paint is hard and I'm not liking the paint because it kind of goes on in streaks. The flat stuff goes on really flat. It looks really nice. So in hindsight, I kind of wish I had just gone with gray because gray is kind of nice. I, I, I don't know why I like it, but so there's that. And then I can start putting this thing back together finally. Got some of this faux wood, plastic decking, whatever. Menards had it on sale for like $1.99 a four foot length. And I'll be putting that in the bottom. I'm gonna basically build a box so that the generator will be behind these motor mounts. Those motor mounts will mount the floor for the electronics piece and the batteries. Generator will go back here, I think, and um, that'll be that. And then we can get, I'm not going to do anything to the mast other than recable it. It's basically just getting bolted back on and recabled, and away we go. But hoping to have this done painting this week to the point where I'd honestly like to be putting it back together by the end of this week. Uh, project's dragging on a little longer than I'd like. Got, there you can see the old wiring. I'm going to put new trailer wiring in. I'm going to put a 7-pin uh, plug in this trailer so that I can run the aux power from a 7-pin capable vehicle to charge the batteries and even potentially run equipment. Uh, it'll just be a 12-volt source. Those are usually 30 amps. And um, there will also be, in the trailer, a seven-way to four-way adapter so that if somebody doesn't have the seven-way plug, they are still able to hook up to the trailer and at least tow it away. And I'm going to put new LED lights in the back, and we'll go from there. So still lots to do.
I'm a bad YouTuber. I failed to record. So I started putting this all back together. I ended up buying some of these new just because the other ones are a little mangled. If anybody's looking for them. These are referred to as extruded units. And these are quarter 20. I ended up just buying a box of 20 of them. So I'm, I attach the fronts up here. I'm not gonna put anything in this front compartment here. That's kind of open to the rest of the trailer. I'll end up plugging these holes. I haven't figured out how I want to do that yet. Um, a smarter man might have thrown some JB weld in there and sanded it all down, but this is me. I'm not a smarter man, so I guess it is what it is. And then uh, starting to get this all pieced back together, get the top on there, try to remember couldn't remember how exactly this fit in here and I think I'm starting to remember that this guy goes in there like so from underneath I think I can get him up there no it doesn't go like that I gotta figure it out I think it goes no, it's from the inside. I gotta, I gotta try to remember how the, that piece goes, cause it might even be. Can't remember how I got him out of there, but there's some work to do there. Haven't bought any wiring for it yet, as far as the trailer lighting. I just need to go get a couple of new LEDs. Put the seven-way on there. Put a charge pack inside here, and then I need to rebuild the winch here by rebuild i'm just going to take it apart wash it grease it put it back together and um, that'll be one of the last things i do just before i put the mask back on there's one more little white piece under there i gotta try to get off there uh that's on there pretty tight so which i suppose is good so i'll pull the impact out for that sand that guy down get it all painted up nice and fresh white like these guys um other than that you know the i left the, it's dark in here so it's kind of hard to tell but i didn't paint the inside super great but it doesn't look bad and then i got that that's that artificial deck lumber i'm gonna create a floor in here i think i'm gonna try to create a compartment back here for the generator to keep that out in the open and try to seal off the front half of this trailer where the batteries and such are i'm not doing that until i actually buy the generator though so i know know how big it is and what's necessary to actually pull the cord on it and then uh yeah last very last things that'll go on are those piano hinges tucked away over here somewhere and the side doors those will be the last thing but a lot of these holes will end up getting plugged up all right, I've been struggling here for a minute. Got that cable out. My pull string came undone. There's a tight little hole up in there somewhere. And uh, it didn't go to my advantage here. Um, I couldn't get this thing to extend. I mentioned that I thought there might be a gravity-based pin or something. Well, turns out it's actually the set pin here goes up in there prevents that whole thing from coming out so I detached the mast from the bottom way way down there and so I've actually slid the whole mast it's still bolted in place which which I'd realize it comes apart that way before um, now I know um, got this thing rotated now I can actually extend this mast and see where this other end goes I don't see anything obvious though but I'll keep touch okay all right so i figured out how the cable works now it's not a single piece of cable it's a pair of cables the first cable is as i showed you down here it runs from the winch out the front up the pulley at the, the front of the mast to the bottom of the mast base up 
into this first set of pulleys here at the top of section one, in and out, back down, and then it is anchored at the bottom. And so what it does is it extends this, this it raises this first uh, mast section and raises the second mast section. The second mast section, we have an anchor point here for um, one end of the second winch cable. And then that cable simply runs this nine feet, uh, give or take, from down there along this mast section in this pulley down into the shaft. And then the base of this has a square piece of metal welded on and an, uh, a hole that this thing has a stopper for that. So as this second section is raised, this top section is raised an equal amount. I think that's kind of nifty myself. Um, but now I know that the only thing I actually need to replace is that second section, um, or, or rather the, the first section of cable. And I think I can just order that from Almond. Um, I'd have to call United Rentals Parts Department. I'll do that tomorrow. Um, they're an Almond dealer. They were able to get me the winch handle for the motor. So I'll call an order rather than just get a random piece of cable and bolt it together like that. I'll actually get one that has the, it looks like it's a crimped on stopper of some sort. Um, this guy right down there. And see if I can't just order that and then try to get that threaded in. The real bitch is gonna be trying to get it threaded through the bottom of this first mast, mast section. I think what I might do is take that section off. I've had it out once already. I didn't disconnect the cable, but... And then I think this is the stopper for this section. Pull that section out as well. And I should be able to um, kind of feed things in now that I know how it runs. Cable runs just like this green pull string is running through a couple of loops on the mass section and then down, up and over. And obviously I can clean out these, these winch sections here a little bit, or these pulleys a little bit. Um, they don't need to be replaced. There's no bad bearings or anything. And then uh, I should be good there. The other thing I think I can order is, they call them an umbilical cable. And my low voltage business, we've been able to custom order certain ones for special access control projects or whatever. And I'm gonna see if I can order one for this that's going to have two LM400, two ethernet, and a, we'll, we'll say like a 16.2 so that I can run 12 volt power up to the top. And then the way that'll work is we'll have it stretched out just like this. It will actually run, let's see if I can switch sides without killing myself here. It'll actually run out the top, down and around, through here, through here. This is to protect it for the forklift. We're never gonna use that forklift feature, but we'll still tuck it up inside there. Same here. And then it runs to, oh man. You got some of these rubber grommet deals. Um, I'm not going to attach anything to this. This will actually be a mount for a solar panel at some point. And then you'll notice that there's a couple of these. Where did it go? Oh, that's this one there might be something mounted to. And then our next one is all the way up here. We got a couple of those. And then the next one would be all the way up here. So this, this length of cable from the top here all the way down here is loose. And then this from here all the way to here would be loose. And that's what this guy here is for. Is as those are loose, when the thing is collapsed, the, ta the tower is collapsed and you simply loop the cables in here and they kind of drape gracefully. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get something ordered. If not, you can buy a 
protective jacketing that you can bundle multiple cables inside and that will prevent some chafing and whatnot and um, if I do that I'll probably just run a single LM400 up to the top we can always use a duplexer or a triplexer if we have to for different frequency ranges but so nothing to do with the top two sections I need to get the bottom cable replaced it was frayed and um, I don't think that's no that's just a piece of fuzz um, and then uh, we should be good so glad I got this piece figured out and uh, I'm gonna kind of collapse it here for today just so I can get the trailer back in the garage here it's way out of balance I had to hook it up to the truck just to support the, the weight on the far end um, I measured uh, from the base of the mast to the top of that T structure there we have 24.4 feet 24 feet and three inches roughly and um, then whatever the height is of the trailer itself so give it another say 12 to 16 inches um, so it's just over 25 feet tall um, top to bottom a guy if he really wanted to we could run another section of an uh, of mast in here I could cut this off and uh, we could rig something up so that somebody could just slide out a pole lock it in place and add another 10 feet or so to this guy but i don't i just don't feel the need to do that um, 35 feet might be nice but 25 feet is better than zero and then we're gonna get um camera and arden uh mesh networking device there um, a twin land ne mesh networking device uh, twins land is the Twin Cities Metro, um, it's kind of like Arden, but it's uh, it's been our own thing. And then uh, we'll have a D-Star UHF repeater. It will have a Verizon cell modem. It will be able to provide Wi-Fi either into Arden or into Twinsland and or internet access. Uh, it'll give internet access to the D-Star repeater so that it can link up to whatever reflector we want to use. And... Uh, then I'll be able to get uh, telemetry and other data from it through that internet connection as well. So it'll be a pretty robust trailer. I'm kind of excited to be starting to actually put it back together. Um, I haven't done trailer lights on it yet. I need to do that. I need to buy some batteries. I need to buy the generator yet. Um, and then I need to figure out how I'm going to handle the weatherproofing. I essentially have about 5U of kit to put in a weatherproof enclosure. I'm okay during setup if you have to pull the front and back cover off for airflow or something like that, but um, um, we want this to be able to sit outside all of the time in the rain, sunshine, snow, um, and then be set up. And then I'm not so worried about splash and whatnot when this trailer is stationary in a parking lot or something, but um, we do want it to be as weatherproof as possible otherwise. So if you got ideas, let me know. And otherwise, uh, we'll keep forging ahead.